Ten minutes, Yuri. Ten minutes. All I ask was uh, you hold Mikhail for ten minutes. Is that the one? No, that is a very short time. How long can you hold your breath, Yuri? I know a fellow in Odessa once could hold his breath for five minutes, 33 seconds. Did Mikhail talk to anyone while he was here? Mikhail is pleased, the man is trying to speak. did you and Mikhail talk about? I told him he had a phone call. The caviar is fresh tonight. Did I tell you what a pretty girl you are? Let me ask you something, sweetheart. Do you have any idea what will happen to you if you lie to me? I will never lie to you, Mr. Jessica. Because if you lie to me, pretty girl, you won't be pretty anymore. Hmm? Get back, though. What she needs is a... going on everyone <laughs> we are back with another episode of the john pod van dam cast it is john and jeff in studio and today we are taking on 1996's maximum risk jeff how's it going man it is going well awesome glad to hear it a lot better than uh us finding our dead lost brothers our long that lost we had. dead twin brother who led a life of crime yep yeah doing a lot better than that <laughs> so we're getting into this. It's rated R action crime and mystery at an hour and 41 minutes. I, I got to say, when I was listening to our, our blood sports episode, because I like to listen to that one now and again. Oh, it's a classic. I totally forgot for a while there. We were talking about the box office numbers on these films. And then like I started trying to look it up again and, I don't know if they just don't have it or if I have to look somewhere else, but I swore IMDb it was kind of like the place for it all. Yeah. But um, I I guess I really, really can't find it anymore. We'll just have to ask him personally. Yeah. Well, one of these days. Yeah. Definitely. So uh, the synopsis of this is a policeman finds out that he had a twin brother who was killed in a violent altercation. He takes his twin brother's place, inheriting his problems, and his girlfriend determined to expose <laughs> corruption and collusion between the FBI and the Russian mafia. That basically spoiled the whole movie right yeah, there. Yeah, pretty much. That, Inher he, he literally did inherit his girlfriend, too. Yeah, man. Like, that, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's just people are so good at writing synopsis or the fact that Van Damme's movies later on in his <laughs> career just become so predictable yeah. that it's like, I feel there's no reason for us to do a review when something <laughs> like that is so... Yeah, it's very very to the point. Straight to the point, but it like covers all, all bits and ends. So this was released in September 13th, 1996, and the tagline is, The Other Side of Safety, which is a terrible tagline. Yeah, it sounds like a movie um, about a crossing guard. <laughs> oh, I'm three days away from retirement. <laughs> uh, JCVD plays Alain Moreau and Mikhail Suvorov. He's like we kind of joked about in the beginning. 
twin brothers, long lost brothers, but it's <laughs> it's not so much like double impact where it's throughout the whole film. No, this is more on the lines of the scene opens up and uh, we'll get more into it with what happens. But also starring in this movie is Natasha Henstridge. Oh, she yeah. She plays Alex. Jean Hugh Anglais, <laughs> who plays Sebastian. I'm really sorry if I uh, butchered that. So I think Natasha, let's see if uh, you can pin her from other movies. She is known for Ghost of Mars, The Whole Nine Yards, and Species. Oh, that's right. She was in Species. Yeah. Yep, she totally that's was. That's where I remember her from. Yep, that's exactly it. The 90s I, Scream I, Queen. I had no clue until I just read that. Jean, the, the French guy, <laughs> he is known for Betty Blue, Queen Margot, and Taking Lives. Of course. Oh, Taking Lives. I'm, I'm pretty positive I watched that one. It's then a cool we, name. We have... Zach Grenier, who played Ivan in the film, he was basically the big baddie of the film. Mm -hmm. He was in Fight Club as Richard Chesler, The Good huh. Wife, and Deadwood. Oh, wow, he was in Deadwood. Yeah. I remember he... that show, they used the word cocksucker a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Deadwood, where it was like every line was a swear word. Yeah. Basically. Uh, I'm trying to see. If... He has a familiar face. And oh, he was in Robo, the new RoboCop. He was Senator Hubert Dreyfus. Huh. Glad to see he's still getting work. Yeah, the the blacklist. He's been his latest is called Crown Heights. Hmm. He was in J. Edgar. Uh, he was John Condon there. Have you ever watched J. Edgar? I have not. Oh, that's a good one. I have to check it out. It'd be a, it's a, it's an interesting topic for a film. Oh, yeah, it, it totally was. He was in Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Who is he in that? Mr. Sherman slash Rafke. I do. No, no, no clue. Yeah, he was in the Zodiac movie in 2007. Hmm. There's so many Zodiac movies now, so it's kind of hard to differentiate yeah. which one is which. But, yeah, that, that'll that be enough. Then we have Paul Ben Victor, who played Agent Pellman. That was the uh, skinny one, right? Yep, that was the skinny one. He He's would, been in a lot. He's yeah, he was. Uh, he was in Don John as the priest. He was in Daredevil as Jose Quesada. Huh. Uh, in Plain Sight as Stan McQueen. He's got 149 movies to his name. Wow. I totally, like, at first when I saw him, I was, like, looking at him, and I was like, dude, is that is that the warden from Orange is the New Black? <laughs> but, no, just kind of looks like him. He was in Get Hard. Which was the, the <laughs> yes. Will Ferrell and uh, Marky Mark, right? Kevin Hart. Oh, was, oh, was that no, one? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, step stepfather was the Marky. That's Mark one. right. He was in True Detective. Who was he in True? Which one? Which uh, season? Uh, first season, I think. Oh, Major wow. Leroy Salter. He was only in one episode. Oh, though. okay. He was in Grudge Match, which was the uh, Robert De Niro and Sylvester Stallone oh, movie. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what else. What happened to Robert De Niro? Like, what did he, he just stop started? Deciding? Yeah, why he started saying yes to everything? Yeah, he just you know, Meet the Fockers four. Why not? Yeah, man. He he decided actually we're gonna have him as a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> Can explain it all. Yep. Yeah. And the other agent, Agent Loomis, was played by Frank Sanger, who still has an up to date IMDb photo. Oh, which um. I just put my foot in my mouth because he just passed away a year ago. <laughs> um, Not quite up to date. No. He was in Leon the Professional as the Fat Man. That's right. Bullet as a prison guard and <laughs> Maxim Risk. <laughs> oh, wow. I just so, saw that. Yeah, me too. Weird. <laughs> what a coincidence. Wow. And I think that, well, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll do this one. Uh, I was trying to figure out what name they would give this guy because they never really gave him a name in the film. I read it and I laughed. It Red Face. Red Face. <laughs> and that's by Stephanos Miltsakakis, who is obviously Greek. Yeah. Huh. He, does he dye his hair? Or... Yeah, his, hair was, his hair was bleach blonde in the Yeah, movie. man. He, he looks pretty huge. He won the World Valley 2-0 tournament in uh, 1999. I could believe it. Wow. He, he looked pretty intimidating. 
He was Stavros and Daredevil, actually. Oh, wow. As well. And he was that weekend at Bernie's as Klaus the Bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> he only has 34 titles to his name, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't know any of the other ones. They all kind of look like... Oh, he was in Derailed as Stavros as well, <laughs> <laughs> which is another Van Damme film we'll be getting into. Nash Bridges... He was in Blood Sport the Dark Kumite. Oh, man. There we go. Is that the one that takes place in Jamaica? The one that's based on the real story of the Kumite? No, I don't. I actually don't think any of them took place in Jamaica, uh, if I recall so correctly. So none of them were based on the real event? Nope, not at all. Speaking of which, I know it was an old article, but how did you like that BuzzFeed article I sent you of the actual interview with Frank Dukes? I didn't read it. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I haven't read it yet. Uh, I, I believe I was at work and I didn't have time I to read it. I called you out on the <laughs> At least I was honest. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was yeah, really it was, good. It was good. Uh, anyway, the movie. Yeah, until I start yeah, talking <laughs> yeah, about that it That part, yeah, really. I lied. That part wasn't in that article. <laughs> <laughs> it was really great when he said his favorite color was purple, right, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> said, said it was brown. Said it was brown. <laughs> Oh, all right. So let's get into this film now. So uh, really, I was telling Jeff off air, I, I really didn't take too many notes on this film because it was honestly just one giant chase scene. Yes. Uh, and it really was just like, take out all the side characters and Van Damme's the one who's in the chase scene the whole time. Yep. So we open up and we're in southern France and we see that Van Damme is running away from some dudes and it's a crazy chase scene. Yeah, so, it's so, a good one. Yeah, right out the gate. And Van Damme ends up on some scooter like this or a fruit peddling fruit, scooter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ramps off uh off a one road into another, crashes and goes through the windshield. All I could think about was the poor stuntmen during this whole yeah, film. Yeah, no shit. Because there were some crazy-ass stunts. Yeah, in some film, rough man. ones. Yeah, yeah. And so Van Damme goes through the shield, and he's he's dead. Yep. He and is. so the For, next scene... What, it's, it's the first time we've seen Van Damme dead in a film, I think, right? No, he, he died in uh, Black Eagle. Oh, yeah. He did die in Black Eagle. Really gruesome death, yep. too. Yeah, he got chopped up by the propeller. <laughs> Just like in Indiana Jones. <laughs> we end up having a weird cut scene and we're at a funeral and you were thinking oh okay van damme's at his brother's funeral yeah. nope that's not it van damme's cop buddy shows up and starts talking to him and lets him know basically that there's a dude that looks just like you and they go to the hotel that he was staying at. Van Damme impersonates him so that they can get in and they yeah, can. Yeah, which uh... is kind of weird. And it only gets weirder as it goes oh, along. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> The definitely. lengths that he goes. I feel like they were like, no, this one, it, this one at work in America, so let's do this in France where no one knows what the laws <laughs> are for, for criminal investigation. So they go into, like, the brother's room. They rifle through all his stuff and find out, you know, hey, he was in, uh, from New York City has a different name, total first name and last name. Van Damme ends up talking to his mom and finds out that uh, basically his mom had to give him up for adoption because she was on hard times. Hard yep, times, she Daddy. Was sick. Hard times. The computer took her job. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a plumber. Van Damme and his, his buddy cop decide to go and investigate investigate a place and they're riding up in the elevator when red face is riding down and he just gives them this creepy look <laughs> they go and they start seeing smoke come out of the doors and they open out the doors and it's all on fire and then red face comes back and he tries to kill van damme there <laughs> and i'm just like what's happening yeah man? i don't know i don't know if like at this time everyone's still confused and they think that uh russian van damme is alive but they don't know that he's dead or are they yeah. trying to kill French Van Damme because, hey, we don't want you to investigate any further on what's going on? Yeah, they don't really reveal until later. And even then, it's still kind of murky. Like, half the bad guys know that he's not the other Van Damme, and then half do know. Right, yeah. It gets really weird. And somehow, Van Damme convinces his cop buddy, because Van Damme's a cop as well in this, 
but he convinces his buddy to let him fly out to New York City and continue to go undercover, in which I, like I said, I don't know French criminal law, but something, <laughs> it something seems went crazy. seems extremely illegal. Yeah, yeah, everything that they did seemed pretty <laughs> extremely illegal. Like, you know, they didn't contact American authorities or anything? No, nope, or... <laughs> yeah. It was kind of like death warrant in a sense when they're like, hey, you Canadian uh, Mountie, why don't you go undercover in yeah. prison? We're not going to let anyone know. Except they had no actual pretense as to why they didn't let anyone know in this movie. Right, yeah. <laughs> yep. There's that. That's true, yeah. Save time. Yep. And so Van Damme gets into New York City. He meets up with this crazy taxi driver. That dude was like a tweaker or something. Yeah, man. He was, he was a character, that's for sure. Probably the best character of the film. Yes. Talking about how he's like an author and how he's going to write these books. And he has basically all of this... Uh, serial killer articles printed up yeah, it was on, really like, weird. cut out and pasted on his in his cab it was, was it was really it in the passenger weird. part of the uh driving part i don't remember like it was in both it was yeah like, like why would he put it in the passenger part yeah i don't know man <laughs> you start freaking people because i remember out. van damme looking i was like why would it be in the passenger section yeah because yeah. van damme like looked down at one of them and it was really weird and uh, kind of had like a humorous moment to uh-huh. it but he he asked the taxi driver to uh, look for a guy called Alex Bohemia, and uh, the driver's like, "What? Are you crazy? This is New York City." <laughs> After he got done telling him about finding a penguin in a sandstorm, <laughs> in which Van Dam goes, "Think of it as just finding a penguin in a sandstorm," <laughs> and he was like, "Oh yeah, dude, you're totally right," and decides to go look for this Alex Bohemia. Van Damme ends up going to this one sketchy neighborhood, and uh, he looks like he's about to have to beat some kids up for trying to punk them when an older gentleman is like, hey, you punk-ass bitches, get out of (laughs) here. You don't know who this guy is. You don't want to mess with them. Van Damme's like, I don't think you know who I am either. It's amazing how quickly he can convince people that he's the person that they know is long lost twin brother. I know, man. Seriously. Everyone Seriously. was just like, oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, yeah, like Van Damme convinces the guy and the guy's like, yeah, there is something off about you. You're totally right. Your and haircut's different. You must be a totally different person. Exactly. And so he, he kind of spills the beans about his brother and his brother being this big time gangster within the Russian mob. And then uh, we get a scene with this another woman uh, kissing Van Dam. We oh, find yeah. out that's Alex. It is a yeah, and uh, yeah, she's a uh, very attractive Natasha Hemsbridge. Yes, yes, man. Oh man, doesn't yeah. get much more '90s hot than that. Oh, I know for real. She she was gorgeous, and she starts talking to him about like you shouldn't have come here. Blah blah blah. Gives him a key. Says I'll meet you here. Don't go to sleep we have to uh stay up up, all night yeah catch up (laughs) and we find out some mob boss who's ivan is looking for van damme and this is where i was kind of not understanding was he looking for france van damme or was he looking for russia van damme (laughs) i'm i think that the Russian mob never knew that he had a twin brother yeah that okay yeah it didn't seem like it up until the end yeah so uh, they're looking for him, and somehow, some way, Van Dam gets confronted as he's leaving. He gets confronted by some of I- Ivan's low-level uh, scum, and the guys get the, their ass kicked by Van Dam, and uh, one of the guys has to tell the Ivan what happened, in which he basically gets choked out. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I asked you to do it for 10 minutes, <laughs> and you couldn't even do that. How long can you hold your breath? <laughs> and that was that was pretty funny. They don't kill the dude because the dude kind of ends up making a scene throughout the whole thing mm-hmm. until he gets shot up. Whoa, spoiler alert. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> like I said, this movie is just one giant chase. It is. And so the guys start chasing after Van Damme again, and they're in the cab driver's car, and then what ends up happening? The cab driver gets shot. Yeah, that was really sad. Yeah, it was really sad. He crashes, and he's holding on to him. Van Damme has, like, a tender moment with the dude. He talks about how he finally has the material for his uh, first chapter, and right, finds yeah. out who Alex Bohemia was. Oh, it's a great plot twist there, you know. And, right, and, yep. uh, and then dies. And then he, like, steals his cab keys for some reason yeah 
real, like you know, grabbing evidence from a crime scene and yeah, it was really weird, really weird. Was like, <laughs> put some what they like put him back in the cab and then uh, wiped off all prints. I don't know what happened, but anyway, we end up seeing that the guys from the FBI are actually bad guys. Yeah, the guys that were chasing Van Damme in yeah. the first place, they were FBI agents. They're but FBI they were agents. dirty FBI agents. And they're dirty. And they're in with the Russian mob, mm-hmm. which you got from that synopsis that spoiled everything. <laughs> but one thing that came out of here that I really enjoyed was the random background French accordion music yes. that would pop up every once in a while they really when, did. when Van Damme was getting <laughs> into the moment. <laughs> I really no, enjoyed that, too. Nothing that. like a French accordion to lighten the mood. <laughs> then we end up seeing the weird Eastern guy again, but this time fighting in the bathhouse. Van Damme takes the dude that I mentioned who was getting choked and ends up holding him by gunpoint so that he can meet Ivan and what appears to be like the actual mob boss. And uh, they're in a bathhouse. Van Damme's talking with the head honcho, telling him about everything. Ivan's pissed off. Yep. Turned out that he wasn't supposed to try to kill him. He was just supposed to bring him in to talk. And, uh, you know, the mob boss was all PO'd about it. And he sent uh, Ivan out in a big huff. Yeah, man. And you knew that trouble was a brewing. Yep, yep. So then Red Face comes in. And we get an Eastern Promises moment yeah, before except for Eastern this time, Promises. I know. I, was, I immediately thought of Eastern Promises. <laughs> except for this time, their towels miraculously stayed on. Yeah, man. The whole time, Van Damme even dis- had that diaper towel going on. <laughs> I didn't know you could get those in bathhouses. <laughs> Very disappointed. Yep. But other than that, it was a great fight scene. Yeah, there was pretty, pretty yeah, amazing These two go scene. at it throughout most of the movie, and every time it's a really good fight scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for real. The fight choreography was awesome. And on top of that, like, dudes are getting offed left and right. And then not just that, but, like, the fact that they were getting offed left and right with no shirts on. Yep. So, like, it's <clears throat> so hard to hide those squibs. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I got to say, man, this is 1996. You know graphics aren't, like, blood graphics aren't there yet. Yeah. So It's all real squibs. It's all squibs, yeah. And they actually murdered these poor people. Yeah, these poor people. It, it, they made it look like it. If they didn't get <laughs> an award for that, for the makeup in this, I don't know what, the makeup and special yeah. effects, because it was on spot, man. Yeah, like, when, and then uh, when uh, I even shot the mob boss after he'd been stabbed, like, you shot him in the head and he saw, like, the backboard of his head is lazing and it's got like the bullet go through it. Yep. It looked really yeah. good. They did a really good job with it. Like, I mean, it seriously made you question if they, they just were shooting people. Yeah, they just murdered a bunch of poor They're Russians. just like, yeah, these poor extras. Like, <laughs> Don't worry, we'll take care of your family. <laughs> and uh, I was like, it's funny. They're all supposed to be high ranking like Russian mobsters, but only like. There's only like one or two with like an arm tattoo or one tattoo on their chest or yeah, something. Yeah, no, like, it was all clean. They're all clean. There was no no story tattoos. Yeah, no there was gigantic like, castles on their chests or backs yeah, or anything. Just a hammer and sickle yep. tattoo, <laughs> really. And that was it. And I'm like, ooh, communist <laughs> mobs. <laughs> so uh we get a pretty badass chase scene again. This time it involves subways and Dude, Van Damme jumps right in front of that train coming. Yep, you see the third rail sizzling. and Yeah, he lands in between it, and he like kind of screams in pain, and oh, it was so cool. And then the other dude stands up and gets obliterated by the oncoming <laughs> yeah, subway a... train. <laughs> they used a good dummy for that, too. Yeah, they did, man. <laughs> they really, really did. Rough. Yeah, yep. And uh, Van Damme falls in between the grates and lands on a, a a traffic light from under below and ends yeah, up was... falling onto a cop car to get arrested. Yeah, they just immediately arrest him. They yeah, they him. don't even check him. <laughs> God, get in the car. Flip him over. <laughs> Dude could be paralyzed. New York City cops don't give a shit. They're just like, get in the cop car. And uh, really, I have no clue. How, is this where they found out Van Damme was a French policeman going undercover? Like, because they, what, what ended up happening? They just ended up letting him go. Yep. It was, uh, well, the FBI talked to him, right? And, yeah, uh, yep. They had his girlfriend, well, his brother's girlfriend, soon to be his girlfriend hostage. Yeah. I guess they just, you know, we're the FBI, just let right, him go. Yeah, yep. like, this is something that we've been working on. This is our jurisdiction. Sorry, guys. I don't know. 
But then they are told by, we find out, this is where we find out the FBI agents are in with the Russians. And uh, they're talking with Ivan. And Ivan's like, you basically do not let her or him go. So they're in this like motel room. They're back in Nice and Van Damme and, and uh, Alex just go at it. Yeah. It's almost like you get a Van Damme wiener shot there. <laughs> We're talking like so close uh universal soldier where we get the <laughs> van damme ken doll like crazy muscles you know the connection from the hip down to the <laughs> it was just like geez louise yeah and you know there's some nudity on her end too <laughs> so i guess i wasn't really paying attention no i, I know when van damme's on screen like that <laughs> you, you can hardly notice a lot of tongue a yes. lot of weird tongue kissing in this. Well, she is a alien parasite after all. That's so. kind of what I was thinking after <laughs> we found out she was in Species. I was like, okay, that makes a lot more sense yep. now. So they're uh, back in Nice, and he's with his cop buddy. He goes to a bank and finds out in this safe deposit boxes evidence to show to prove that the FBI were corrupt and in it with the, the mob. And also a bunch of money and a handgun. Hell yeah! It and, was uh, it was revealed that he was a sniper when he was in the military. So oh yeah, yep, yep. And his brother, the there was the pre-recorded voice, and I like this one where his brother is like, "Either we have met up and we are together and reunited, or I am dead." <laughs> and I was like, "If you've met up and are reunited, you probably want to be doing this tape recorder." Would well, you? you know, he wanted it all to be perfect so he didn't want to choke up while he was with him in person yeah that's true that's true this that's, is the second time he's it. had to listen to a tape recording of yeah his... yeah of like uh it someone in a, it was a nowhere to run right? yep nowhere to run where he's like hey i got a 50 50 chance of meeting elvis right <laughs> <laughs> i'm dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh he, he his brother left him a bunch of money and then it, once again Crazy Russian dude, red face comes in, slits Just the throat yep. of the bank teller. <laughs> totally makes a scene again. Totally man. makes a scene. We have an awesome elevator fight scene yes. where finally Van Damme gets the upper hand. Oh, that was he the kicked knife, a knife into his shoe, shoe? or like oh, oh my, the toes are oh. oh yeah, man. Yeah. Knife right into the toes, then <laughs> stabs him with it in the chest, and Red Face is finally dead. All the meanwhile, you know, the place is going crazy because Van Damme took a cigarette and some gum and put it to a sprinkler alarm system to make all, you know, rain. To make it rain. To make it rain before it was cool to make it rain. (laughs) And the police come. It gets absolutely crazy. Giant hostage situation. Some more, yeah, giant hostage situation. Some more chasing goes around. And uh, I noticed Van Damme's shooting is absolutely atrocious. Yeah. He is pulling like the gangster lean. He did, gun. yeah. He did the sideways shooting. The sideways shooting, which makes no sense, Wasn't especially if you're a cop. Is a uh, is Van Damme a lefty? I think so. Actually, I never noticed. I think he is. I- I'm pretty. I'm, I'm pretty sure he is. Huh? I never yeah. noticed he was shooting. Like in other movies, I never noticed they shot with his left hand. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's what he was doing, and. Uh, yeah, Ivan's tr- has his buddy hostage, his buddy cop hostage, but all the rest of the cops circle the van and they're like, yeah, we know what's happening. Drop it. Pretty cool shootout with the driver who ends up getting offed. Yep. And then Ivan goes on a chase with that, flips over the uh, van and the van's on fire and it's going to explode. Van Dam gets up to it. He and his Van buddy. Van Dam jumps on the damn van. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I like uh, that. Thank you. I like that. And uh, his buddy beats the crap out of Ivan, throws Ivan up through the window. Van Dam clocks him with the gun, <laughs> knocks him out, pulls his buddy cop up. They escape. The van blows up, kills Ivan in it. And you're thinking, oh, that must be it. No. no, no, no. You forgot about Alex, the love interest, and the <laughs> FBI agents. So then we're on another car chase. And at this <laughs> point, I seriously thought it was going to say directed by Michael Bay. At the end of this, <laughs> uh, just because of all of the explosions and the ridiculousness with some of these small cars. 
But uh, Van Dam ends up getting chased through and crashes into a butcher shop yeah, with like giants, filled with pigs. Yeah, pig carcasses everywhere. everywhere. Like it was just like the fight scene in uh, Predator Two, except <laughs> for with a chainsaw that was mysteriously in the, yep. in the slaughterhouse. Yep, a chainsaw in a slaughterhouse, which uh, one of the skinny agents grabs, and he's sawing pigs in half. He's trying to get at Van Dam. <laughs> Van Dam hangs upside down yes. on one of the meat hooks, shoots the fat agent, shoots the skinny agent. Didn't he, didn't he shoot him in the dick? Or was it in the stomach? I think, I think in think... the stomach. I, th- I think in the stomach. It was really was... close up, so it was hard to tell yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah those shots were, were really close up. And so uh, Van Dam is, ends up saving the day. They cut the scene, and we see basically it's him and his buddy cop talking and he's like at least you have all this money uh, now if everything can <laughs> it's not get gonna proven. be evidence you're not in trouble right, in know, the united yeah. states yeah they're like <laughs> yeah if things get proven right or whatever and i'm just like wait that's a ton of money where's that money come from that now it's okay it's his and then he meets up with alex and everything's okay because that's what go you to, do they go to meet, meet his mom yep and they go to meet his mom hey this is the uh, girlfriend of my long lost dead brother she's my girlfriend yep, now she's my girlfriend now <laughs> it's an unwritten rule that's what you're supposed that's to like, do when like, your twin brother dies it's like biblical law or something I think, yeah man it, seriously like it kind of is it's, you know like it, it seriously is something out of the bible for real <laughs> Oh, that was one thing I forgot to mention was the director was Ringo Lamb and the writer was Larry Ferguson. And Ringo is known for his work City, in the Beatles. City on Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yep. With uh Chow Yun Fat. Oh and well. Full Alert. With uh Full Alert. Was that the name of the actor? It's a good name for an actor. Yeah, that is a that's what my actor's name is gonna be. <laughs> starring Full Alert. It's right up there with Powers Booth. Oh, Powers Booth is such a beautiful name. Isn't man. it? Oh, dude, this uh, Ring of Lamb did uh, In Hell as well, another Van Damme film. Oh, no, and no. Replicant. Wow, hey, they found a dream okay. team. Well, there we go. Now we, now yeah. we kind of know what's going on. Now this one's going to be a big departure from our last movie where you... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, so uh, the, the, there we have it. That was the end of Maximum Risk. So, Eight. like... Were he's in movies where he played two roles, like some sort of like scheme to where he get two salaries or something? Because he did it a lot. I know, maybe, man, maybe. Like I, I don't know what. This is, this is our fourth film, isn't it? Or oh, let's see, there's. Well, when we started out, uh, we had Double Impact. There's Double Impact. There's Time Cop. We did Time Cop, yeah, where he was playing another one, and this is the third one. So, so yeah, far. we we there's a fourth to come. Yep, yep. And there's a fourth to come. So yeah, we're we're really getting twice the Van Dam big time. Hell yeah! So uh, how many Van Dam splits would you give this? You know, I very much enjoyed this movie. It was a great action thriller romp. It didn't leave me scratching my head that often. I mean, the plot holes in it were just typical action movie plot holes not yeah just yeah it wasn't plot yeah holes. it wasn't ridiculous plot holes uh no titular lines no titular lines i think only one headbutt i think he headbutted a uh, red face with the back of his yep. head when he was in a headlock yep uh no no splits uh no splits yeah he might have shot the one fbi agent in the dick in the dick that, yeah that, there that might have be been one the... groin attack yeah one yeah maybe but all in all i i really like this movie uh i would say we I saw a van damme ass you did see van damme ass I think that puts it a, at a eight splits out of ten. Oh wow, man! Eight splits out of ten. Nice. I'm uh, I'm gonna go with seven. Seven splits out of ten on this. There you this. go. Solid seven point five. Yep. Yeah. He totally that split and a half. I I liked it. I this was the first time that it was new to both of us. Uh huh. I had never seen this movie no as, as a younger man or, or as a kid. I totally, this was with new eyes. And I thought I saw this movie, but obviously it was the wrong one. Yeah, it was one of the other uh, four movies where he plays multiple roles. Yeah, yep, exactly. So, yeah, very, very surprised at, at it. Uh, I, it. To me, it did kind of like run a little long. 
Uh, but one too many chase scenes. Uh, yeah, but the chase scenes were good too. They were really so good. you can't can't really fault it on that. Man, there was so, some reckless shooting in that movie. Like in the middle of New York, these yeah, Russian officers are just yeah. blowing up little yeah. Odessa. Like that's that's bystanders true. getting shot left and right. People getting shot all up in this film. And like I said, the effects and and stunts were awesome. Yes, there's there's no no ifs ands or buts about that. Yeah, and so. it's aged really well. Like uh, if you enjoy a nice bloody uh, adrenaline film. Old, high octane action movie. Yeah, man. Yeah, then it really this did. one was you know be right up your alley. Yeah, with all and and even so the even the outfits aren't terribly bad because it's a lot of suits. Yeah. So it's not like you're, and it was you're the nineties, which aged. Sure, yeah, they wasn't the giant double breasted eighty suits. Yeah, right. Exactly. No, it was it was we're getting into the nineties with uh, some of the suit choices and more muted nothing, colors. Yeah, lot, lot yep, more plums muted and colors. mulberries. Yeah. And, Yep. So that was uh, that was that was pretty good too. So, cool cool film. I would uh, definitely recommend you watch it. So getting into uh, trivia here, we have originally filmed as the Exchange, but during post production, Sony felt that people wouldn't get the sub the subtle title. <laughs> that explains the uh, much less subtle title that had very little to do with the actual film. <laughs> Sony. See, like the exchange would have made a lot of sense for the name of the film, but yeah, well, yeah. whatever. Yep. Nope. That's, that's just the way it goes. Right. Sony wanted something that sounded more like an action film. A new title bloodstone was selected. <laughs> Sony even used this title to promote the film in several industry publications, but they ultimately felt that the new title lacked the urgency and excitement of a Jean-Claude Van Damme film. Ultimately, Maximum Risk risk was selected. What the hell does Bloodstone have to do with the movie? That, I have no clue. Maybe that's saying you can't squeeze blood from a stone? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Is that, or is it you can't squeeze water from a stone? Was well, it going to be like a suitcase know. full of blood diamonds? Like That's what I thought, too. It was like, hey, yep. Isn't that, uh, yeah, oh, no, Blood Diamonds was the name of the film, wasn't yep. it? Okay. This was Jean-Claude Van Damme's first starring film under his contract with Sony Pictures. I gotta say, man, Van Damme does the quest. He looks super young. He does maximum risk, and we start to see the age. Yeah, his face gets more lined and uh, sunken in. And they were like, hey, I'm 32. And I was like, (laughs) ha. Yeah, you're 32, Van Damme. Still in great shape, though. Oh, to this day. Totally. Yeah, to this day, man. In some of the international trailers for the film, Alain Moreau tells Alex that he is a contractor. She asks, you're a hitman? To which Alan nods. In the released film, Alan's occupation is a policeman. Huh. Ringo Lam, an Asian movie director, directed this as his American debut. John Wu, also an Asian director, had an American debut film, Hard Target, both starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know, it makes sense that he's a uh, Asian action uh, movie director, because this definitely had an Asian action movie vibe yes, to it. Yes, yeah, it totally did. It It totally did. It was Van Damme's idea that Asian actor director Ringo Lam direct this film as his American directorial debut. Hey, there we go. Yep. Maximum Risk was a box office disappointment in the U.S., but performed well in Europe, grossing almost forty million dollars. Wow. Ooh, hey, hell yeah. Yeah. Well, it did Europe. have a lot of uh, scenes in Europe, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. French super cop. Yep. After a string of successful theatrical action movies in the early '90s, Maximum. Oh, I can't even say the title of this. <laughs> Maximum Risk was one of the first movies starring Van Damme to skip theaters and be released direct-to-video in many countries. This became the fate of most of Van Damme's movies that came afterwards, with a few exceptions, such as The Expendables 2. And I'm starting to get choked up reading that. (laughs) I know. Because that that was totally true. Yep. It it started uh, started not to see his movies going into theaters or having short Limited Didn't this movie runs. with um, Dennis Rodman that went to theaters? Right? Yeah, yep, Double Team. Yep, that was it. Yeah. Double Team. Yeah, that went to theaters. Universal Soldier Regeneration or whatever went to theaters, and then it kind of really yep. fizzled out until Expendables Two. Not many quotes in this, actually. No, I can't remember um, any quotes from the movie. Yeah, let's see, Alan. This is not your lucky day. Tell your boss to leave me the fuck alone, <laughs> Sebastian. Parents always lie to their children to prepare them for the way they'll be treated later by the government. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pretty good quote, actually. Cab driver. I can find a penguin in a sandstorm. 
<laughs> and that was it. That, that was yeah. all the, the quotes that, that they gave all, us. That, that's the part I remember the most. I, I feel wise. like it's our duty to add more quotes to this. Yeah, but... we should start updating these. Uh... Yeah, seriously, these, these IMDb Do you pages. have an IMDb account? I Yeah, it's so old, though. It was like from when they first did. They might have got rid of it because I haven't logged into Those it in fuckers. forever. I have no clue. We'll get them. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do it. Do it live. <laughs> All right, so I didn't expect that to get cut so short. Uh, we're moving on. I think, let's see, where are we? Oh, duh, I know where we're at. We are in Friends, <laughs> the TV series. Van Damme plays one episode in Friends. That's right. 1996, there's not really any uh, trivia from it. And all the quotes are all Van Damme's lines. So, <laughs> eh. well, we'll get into that. It's yeah. going to be its own episode. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy that one as well. Then after that, we get into 1997 with Double Team. Yes. So we get to see Van Damme playing Jack Quinn next to Dennis Rodman. Dennis the Worm Rodman. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is going to be fun. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed that episode. As always, thank you for hitting that download button and subscribe. If you really enjoy what we do, please rate us five stars on iTunes or any podcatcher that you listen to. Helps us out tremendously. We've been seeing the numbers. They've been rising, and we like to see that. We just want to say thank you guys for that. Also... If you really enjoy what we do, get on patreon.com slash podbros. We're going to be uh, doing a little thing here where we'll have our own little level. i got to create some stuff for it, but that'll be up soon, so keep an eye out for that. Also, if you shop on Amazon, this is what really helps us out. If you don't want to give us money, please consider this. Scroll on down to the Amazon link on our page at podbros.com and click on it. It's not going to cost you anything. It helps us out in the long run. Be sure to bookmark that. Use that link. doesn't cost you anything at all. Okay, that's enough of me shilling. (laughs) I am done. I am John. And I am Jeff. You've been listening to another episode of the Jean Pod Van Damcast. Now, if you'll excuse me, i got to go find a penguin in a sandstorm. Oh, Monsieur Souverain. Welcome again. If there's anything I can do for you, do not hesitate to make a request. I think we'd just like to go right in if that's okay. I'm sorry. Only Monsieur Souverain. The vault is for customers only. Sir, my colleague and I would like to discuss I'm sorry, these. sir. Bank policy. Please, Monsieur Souverain, come with me. Please, make yourself comfortable and stay as long as you desire. Unfortunately, we must go through the identity protocol again. Yeah, okay. Please identify yourself. Mikhail Shavrov. And the second name? Um, Alain Moreau. Your mother's Christian given name? Chantal Moreau.